McCullough, and I wrote chapter 17 in the research handbook on democracy and development. The chapter is entitled Consociational Democracy, Compromise or Collapse. Consociationalism is a leading form of democracy for divided societies. It consists of four main political institutions, grand coalitions, proportional representation, segmental autonomy, and mutual veto rights. It is designed to facilitate the political representation and participation of ethnic majorities and minorities in government together. It has been adopted in diverse settings around the world, initially in the Netherlands, Belgium, Austria, and Switzerland, but also in places such as Cyprus, Malaysia, and Suriname. In recent decades, it has also become a central means for ending war and building peace in such places as Bosnia and Herzegovina, Northern Ireland, Lebanon, Iraq, and Burundi. As a conflict transformation device, consociationalism has a mixed record. It works in some places on some issues, but not everywhere all of the time. What explains this variability? In the chapter, I suggest that consociation's mixed record stems from the fact that it contains two sets of countervailing incentives, one that leads towards compromise and cooperation, and one that might encourage intransigence, outbidding, and the possible collapse of the system. So in some cases, consociation can ignite a game of brinkmanship between parties as they attempt to extract concessions from each other. In such circumstances, coalitions can be difficult to form, parties might rely too heavily on their veto power, and there might be legislative deadlock. Such arrangements can also be difficult to modify. Either parties are not willing to change the rules, or they simply cannot agree on the way forward. Yet there are also important incentives for cooperation. In the face of ethnic violence, often little other than a share of power can convince parties to lay down their weapons. This may persuade would-be spoilers to join government and may motivate them to stay there. Indeed, extended periods of cooperation can encourage a moderating of intergroup antagonisms. If consociation contains these two very different set of incentives, compromise or collapse, how do we know which configuration will prevail? In the chapter, I discuss four factors. First, adoption. Many of the early consociational democracies were designed by domestic elites who preemptively and mutually agreed to share power in order to ward off a worsening of intergroup relations. More recent cases have come about either through a mutually hurting stalemate on the battlefield or through imposition by external actors after violent conflict. Second, institutional fit. The size, number, and geographical distribution of groups and any cross-border linkages they may have will determine the kinds of institutions required. Third, rule inclusivity. The rules need to be inclusive enough to provide decision-making power for majorities and minorities and to capture any potential spoilers, as well as be inclusive enough to govern for the whole of society, including those who do not wish to be identified in ethnic terms. Fourth, rule flexibility. There's a tendency to want to lock in rigid stipulation on the share of power held by each group, but this can make it difficult for society to move beyond conflict. Again, groups granted specific rights may be unlikely to forsake them, and parties that believe that the other side benefits more than they do will lose the incentive to stabilize the system. That system, therefore, needs to be able to adapt to changing political circumstances, not to entrench them. So the central message of the chapter is that inclusive political institutions, like consociationalism, are important for facilitating peace, democracy, and stability in divided settings. Whether the incentives for compromise or collapse are activated is often contingent on the interplay between how the rules came into being, the fit between the rules and their context, and whether the rules are sufficiently inclusive and flexible enough to respond to shifting political dynamics over time. Thank you very much.